Hello. Welcome to my video. Today we are going to talk about the sequential function charts or the graph PLC programming language. This video has been requested from Reddit, so please contact me if you are interested in specific kind of PLC topic. Before we jump into the practice, let me give you a basic knowledge of the sequential function chart programming. So how does graph work? Basically, we have steps where we can execute our instructions and we have transitions that lead to another step. The steps are executed sequentially. If a transition's condition is fulfilled it will go to the next step, and execute the instructions given in that step. Its advantage is, that only the active step's transition is monitored. Steps are identified by number or name. In each step you can have the following actions. S, set a tag to 1. R, set a tag to 0. D, set a tag to 1, after a specified time. L, set a tag to 1 for a specific period. N. Set a tag to 1 as long as the step is active, or, give value to a variable in SCL. In steps we also have events. These events will not be shown in practice in today's video, but I will make one in the near future. S1 is active for one cycle if the program enters the step. S0 is activated for one cycle if the program is about to leave the step. In a step you can assign some actions to an interlock. If the interlock condition is fulfilled the interlock depending steps are also executed. Interlock has two events, L0 means that interlock condition changed from false to true. L1 means the opposite, the interlock condition changed from fulfilled to not fulfilled. Supervision is used for error handling. Supervision also has two events. V1 means that there is a coming error. V0 means also the opposite, that the supervision's condition changed from true to false. Interlock and supervision have the acknowledgement requirement setting, which means that after they have the good state, the interlock the condition is true, and the supervision condition is false. On the block interface you have to set the ACF input. This acknowledgement also has the event, A1. Important to remember, only the active steps transitions are being monitored. If you have a transition somewhere in your program that has a true value but the preceding step is not active, it will have no effect on the execution. Transitions can only be programmed in ladder logic, or in function block diagram. If the following transition is fulfilled, the program goes to the next step and so on. We have two types of branches. The first one is the simultaneous. Its branches start to execute at the same time. If you want to close this branch all branches have to be activated in order to make the transition valid. The other type has the alternative branching. Only one branch can be executed this way. If you have three transitions, and all three are true, the leftist one is started. Always the left first true transitions branch is executed. Other sequence elements are the sequence end and the jump. If your sequence finishes you can close it with a sequence end. If you want to make a jump to another step, you just have to give the number of the step where you want to jump. Okay, now we know the basics of the graph programming. I brought an example to practice it a little bit. I will make a more detailed in depth video about graph soon. I found this example in an Omron manual, I will put the link of it into the description. So here is the parking house entrance. We have a vehicle sensor, a ticket sensor and the closed and open gate sensors. Our actuators are the gate opener and closer motor, a ticket printer and the display. When the system is waiting for a car, the gate is closed, the vehicle sensor is off, the ticket sensor is off, the gate open sensor is off. The gate close sensor is on and nothing is displayed. It should serve as an initial step in our graph. As a car approaches the vehicle sensor signal changes to true, and a ticket printing is initiated. On the display take the ticket is displayed. When the driver takes the ticket, we open the gate, write it on the display. We open the gate, until the gate open sensor signals are true. For safety you should always add the counter signal as a verification. If the gate is open, then go is displayed. When the car passes the vehicle sensor turns off. After 3 seconds since the car passed we close the gate. Closing gate is displayed on the display. This part I forgot to implement. It should be in step 5, on the same way it will be in the previous steps, only the string is changed. Ok, so we have our DIA project open. Let's add our PLC. I have an old 1516 PLC in my hand so I don't have to use the simulator. Let's define our tags first. I could use memory bits, 
but since these are process imaged input and output bits I can easily overwrite the input bits too. Since we have a display, and we want to write messages on it, and a tags, data type, cannot be a string, I declare it in a DB. Let's add our FB. The graph language can only be selected with a function block, because it has its own data structure stored in an instance DB. OK. So we have our initial step and first transition. In the initial step we should reset every output bit. We could reset also our inputs but on the field it makes no sense. As mentioned, with the inaction we can execute it as CL instructions. To write a string in SCL you have to write it between single apostrophes. SCL codes written here, does not have to end with a semicolon. Since the transitions can only be written in LAD or FBD, I prefer using LAD. To exit the initial step and start the second step, we have to have the following conditions. The barrier is closed, there is a vehicle standing, the barrier is not open and there is no ticket in the dispenser. If these conditions logical value is true, we can go into step 2. By double clicking on a step you can select the step view. Where you can only see the corresponding interlock, supervision, transition, and action. I prefer this view, because it reduces the chance of interchanging actions transactions, in short reduces the error factor. In step 2 we have to print our ticket, so I set the value and, wait till the dispenser signals that there is a ticket. On the display we signal our message to the driver. If the ticket is printed, we go to the next step, and reset the command to issue it, while opening the gate. On the display we signal, that the gate is opening. The gate is completely open, when the open sensor signals true, and the closed sensor signals false. The open gate leads us to step 4. Here, we ask the driver, to drive into the parking house. If the vehicle's sensor signals false, we go to the next step. In our last step, after the vehicle is gone, we wait 3 seconds before starting to close the gate. If the gate is closed, the close signal signals true, and the open sensor reports false. If these conditions are met, that the gate is closed we will jump back to the initial step.
OK, our graph is programmed, we need to call it now, in a cyclic organization block. When using OB1, you can use LAD, STL or even SCL networks mixed. Let's just drag and drop our FB on the rung. Kia will declare an instance DB for us. This is why we cannot use graph language of functions, because it has to have a static memory area. Let's hit compile. The compile shortcut is Ctrl plus B. OK, it is downloaded now. Let's copy our tags, and add the display message string also into a watch table. To go online you can use the shortcut, Ctrl plus K, to go online and start monitoring instantly. You can use the shortcut Ctrl plus T. Now I used Ctrl plus T. Let's start monitoring our graph too. Let me just open the transitions. It stays in the initial step, and waits for the condition to be fulfilled. Let's set the sensor's value for waiting a car. So our gate is closed and not open, there is no ticket in the dispenser. We wait for the car to arrive. Let's set the vehicle sensor to true. Simulating that the car has arrived. The arrival leads us to step 2, where we start printing the ticket, and write it on the display. I signal it, that the ticket is printed, that will lead us to step 3, and start opening the gate. We write opening the gate, on the display and set the gate position signals. If the gate is open, on the display go is signaled. When the car leaves, the vehicle sensor switches to false. After 3 seconds, we initiate the closing of the gate. When the gate position signals say the gate is closed, it will drive back us to our initial step, step 1. We can repeat the process. We could have implemented a parking space counter, or could have programmed it more compact, but this video's purpose was only to demonstrate the very basics of the graph programming language. This was our graph basic tutorial. Thank you for watching it. If you have any question don't be shy to ask it. If you liked the video, to help my work please subscribe and press the like button. See you next time. Bye bye.